Welcome, I'm Seth, and today I'm gonna to be continuing on with my project of building a cherry liquor cabinet. Before I did any of the veneer work that you saw in the last video, I actually went and rough milled down all of the major parts for this cabinet. That was about two weeks ago now, and they've been sitting for a little while. Um, looking at them today, I can see that there was a little bit of movement in the wood, so it's a good thing I let them sit. So first step today is to take these over and get them down to their final size. So for my side panels, let me explain for a second what it is I'm going to be doing here. First of all, I veneered this plywood because I want to be able to do some joinery on it. So what I ultimately want is one side of this panel to be completely flush and not have any lips or anything on it so that um, I, can, I can run a router across it and I can do all my joinery and have one clean reference surface. And that's going to be the inside surface of this piece. So I've milled down the rails to be the exact thickness of this piece. What I had hoped for was to have enough thickness to be able to make them a, a quarter inch thicker so that I could um, hang them over on the outside because I do want them proud. Like it's a frame and panel design, that's what I want it to look like on the outside. But I didn't have any material that was thick enough. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be gluing the rails to the tops and bottoms of the plywood and then I'm going to laminate on um, another piece for the outside that'll give it that appearance, that'll give it that quarter inch lip um, on just one side. This also had the added benefit of allowing me to take one piece of material with some grain pattern that I liked and turn it into two sets of matching pieces with continuous grain top to bottom. So this is ultimately what I'm going to end up with. I'm going to have a quarter inch overhang on the outside to make this look as if it is um, a quarter inch panel like I will have on the back side. So the, the sides will match the back from the, from the exterior. But on the inside, I'll have that clean surface, that flat piece of material that I can do my joinery with. Okay, real quick before I cut these panels, it's worth noting that these rails that I glued on are actually about an eighth inch shorter than the panel and that they're glued on about a sixteenth of an inch in from either side. That way I've got a clean flat square reference that I can run against my fence. I'm going to trim off about a quarter inch on this side, flip it over and then cut it down to its final size. Okay, so for this project, the majority of the joinery that I'm going to be using is loose tenon joinery. I'm, I've got a shop made slop mortiser 
that I'm going to be using to, to cut these with. So what I have to establish is the location that I'm going to want my tenons. And I've settled on using five total per side of the panels. So that'll be one top and bottom that will be in the hardwood rail and then three that will be in the plywood on the sides. So then the, my next step is to set up the joinery for the top and bottom rails across the uh, front and back. What I've got here is a cutoff from trimming those um, down to size. I've got the actual rails here. And I'm just using this cutoff to determine exactly where I want to cut, the, cut these mortises. Because I've got one other thing to consider, and that's just that I've got two intersecting mortises here. One that's from the side panels, and then the one that's going to be from the rail. So I just want to make sure I position them at a, at a point where I can cut them cleanly. And if I have to, I can, um, you know, I, I can trim down and chamfer the ends of the tenons, but I'd rather not. What I'm looking for uh, position-wise is just the same thing that I'm going to see from my faux panels on the sides. And that's that I've got a little bit of a setback, about a quarter inch, uh, maybe a little bit less, probably more like a, actually it's probably more like an eighth of an inch setback here. So I am going to go for, let me see what it is from this side. It's about three eighths of an inch depth there, or height, distance from the outside, whatever you wanna, whatever you wanna call it. Okay, so I've got the, the case dry assembled. As you can see, I've got the joinery done on the top and bottom and the rear and the front bottom rail. This top rail is gonna be dovetailed uh, with a single dovetail on either side of the cabinet. So I'm gonna move this case down onto the ground and get started on that. So I've got one small thing to consider when I do these dovetails and that's that I'm gonna cut a rabbit on the bottom side of this. That'll do two things for me. One, it'll establish a clean face to make sure that the distance left to right at the top of the cabinet is the same as the distance left to right on the bottom of the cabinet. Also, it's gonna give me less material to actually cut and dovetail in, which is important because I've got some other joinery that could potentially interfere with it. So by bringing this up to about a quarter inch of the top of it, it's gonna make it look nicer going to establish that clean shoulder across the front, but also it's going to have a very useful effect by preventing the joinery from interfering.
right, so I went ahead and cut the dado on one side of the bottom of the style. The reason only one side is because the way that I cut the rabbits in these was with a router bit. Um, and I didn't flip it side to side, I just kept it at one pass. And in doing so, it's probably not perfectly centered. So the way you correct for that is to size one side of the ten at a time. I'll get one side, make sure it's correct and fits exactly where I want it to. In this case, this side is going to be this inside face. And then it's set at the proper depth. And then you flip it over and it'll probably be a, it, it will be a slightly different height setting on the table saw to take care of that. But for right now, what I'm wanting to do is to size this style. Okay, so the way I'm going to do that is by fitting it right into the space where it's going to go. I'm using the outside edges here just in case there's any kind of very slight warp in there. Also, it makes sure that I'm square because I can reference off of the leg, and make, which is going to guarantee to keep me square. And then all I'm going to do is basically hold it up into place and make my mark. Okay, so it's the next morning. Um, when I left all, when I left here last night, I had just finished this rear style, and I dry fit it into the back panel assembly. What I'm trying to do right now is just figure out what my next steps are. Um, in other words, what's the order I'm going to go in with the um, next things that I need to do? I need to get the front style fit between the two front rails. However, I can't actually install it right now because before I do. I need to establish the dimension that both of these are going to be away from this side panel. I was able to do the joinery on the rear style just by the nature of what it is. Um, I can move it an inch left and right, no big deal. I can place it basically anywhere in there just because I've got these rabbits cut into the top and bottom rails and it will fit anywhere in that. I also, in order to establish that dimension, need to do the joinery of the center panel to the front and rear style. But in order to do the joinery of the front and rear style, I need to fit the front style. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry assemble the front frame. Once the front frame is dry assembled, I will fit the front style to the front frame without any joinery and I'll use loose uh, tenon joinery on that as well. That way I can fit it, I can do my joinery of the panel, but I also, in order to do the joinery on the panel, need to establish the final dimension on that center panel. In order to establish the final dimension on that center panel, I've got to dry assemble this case. So I think first step is to, to dry assemble the front rails and legs, call it the front panel. Um, establish the size of the front style, then I will dry fit the case together and establish the size on the center panel. I don't want to just go by measurements. Um, as you do this stuff, you, you could end up a 32nd off, a 16th off, and you're not going to know it until you go to fit that in and all of a sudden there's a gap and there's nothing you can do about it because you've already built everything else. So. So I think that's a good plan. All right, so I've got everything dry assembled except for the top rail on the front just because it's going to make it easier to work without it in here. What I want to do is establish the exact dimension between the front and the rear rails because the styles are flush with them. So if I can establish that dimension between those two points and I fit the center panel to that, 
then I know that it will also fit between the rails. But just like when I was sizing up the styles, I didn't want to do that in the center because there is, you know, movement in this wood. It can bow a little bit. So I want to do it out here so that this dimension, which is locked in by the joinery, will be carried over to the center. Perfect. It's snug, but it fits. I'm going to have to notch the top of this to fit around that top rail. Okay, so I think that's probably a good place to stop this video. Um, I've got the main carcass together now, all just dry assembled, um, but I've got my three larger veneered panels in place and all the joinery done there. I've got the joinery completely done on the, the rear rails and the style, and I've got everything but my uh, joinery for this front style that goes to the uh, two rails, and I'm gonna wait for that until I get uh, more firm on my dimensions here where the wine rack is gonna go. So that'll be the next step is, is building the, the wine rack components, sizing them, and then sizing this panel to that. After that, I've gotta worry about installing this shelf over here. And then once I've got that done, I can start thinking about sub-assemblies and maybe some pre-finishing, we'll see. But anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully uh, I'll see you again on the next one.